From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Wednesday, April 17th. I'm Augusta McDonald. Our top story this morning, grizzly bears are expanding into territory they haven't stepped foot in in decades. Just this week, a grizzly had to be put down after a run-in with cattle in the foothills of the Bighorn Mountains. That's near Ten Sleep, Wyoming. That's more than 80 miles from the eastern boundary of the area considered suitable for grizzlies. Grizzly bears haven't been documented here since before the population was listed under the Endangered Species Act in the 1970s. Yeah. Fish and game experts say if more grizzlies do head down there, it could lead to more conflicts with people. Also in Wyoming this morning, a large reward is up for grabs for anybody who has information that could lead to harsher penalties against this man. Cody Roberts was fined just $250 for this now viral incident. He took a live wolf into a bar chained up with its mouth taped shut. Roberts eventually killed the wolf. Now two animal welfare groups are offering a combined $20,000 hoping to build an animal cruelty case against him. Roberts was fined only for illegal possession of a wild animal. Wyoming Fish and Game told Q2 animal cruelty laws do not apply to predators like wolves. Now we have to get to the early leader for Montana's video of the year. Miller's coming in here. Let's take a look at this. This is in Butte. That is a live elephant walking down the road near Town Pump. It escaped from a traveling circus that was performing at the Civic Center. Handlers were washing the elephant when a vehicle backfired and spooked it and he took mm. off. So uh, that animal leader, of course, safely corralled. Oh, that's a, well, there you go. Yep. <laughs> there they go. The meme pages were having a lot of fun with this yesterday. I saw some of those posts. Yesterday. Yeah, my favorite one was uh, the only Republican in Butte. <laughs> Look at that. Well, and, 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 and you know, and that elephant's going to go where that elephant wants to go. So I'm yep. glad it ended it ended okay there. Man, how do you how do you corral that? How do you uh, mice. convince lots it to do mice. something? <laughs> mice. Bring the mice. That's in. right. Yeah, mice. Exactly. Watching the cartoons. Anyway, we're glad everybody's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I told you 24 hours ago that we were going to have a different uh, look when we woke up this morning. Mm -hmm. I think we have a live sh uh, shot of Sheridan, right, where the snow was coming down. Yeah, a, a, a change of pace with the snow. There we go. Oh, that, oh, I love that. That is a beautiful shot right there. Yeah, great shot. And, and Sheridan, you may see these snow showers kind of linger through the day. Depending on what models you look at, uh, they may stick around for a while, especially up in the higher elevations around the Bighorns and whatnot, where we could still see several inches of snowfall, maybe a foot still to come before this system moves on out. Great shot looking down from the rims. You can see some of the snow up there that is accumulating, not happening here in the city. It's just too warm out there. But the roads are wet, so please be careful as you're heading out this morning. Change of pace today. We're going to be 20 degrees colder than we were yesterday where we hit that high of 64, so we've been above above average. Now we're going below average over the course of the next few days. Very windy out there across the area today. Gusts 20 to 40 miles an hour, especially on the eastern side of the state. Uh, the rain came in last night, almost two tenths of an inch of rainfall here in Billings. Uh, seeing some of that snow this morning with a little bit of moisture added to it. Uh, and then once that goes away, we're just going to see high pressure and mainly dry conditions as we move into the weekend, although another shot of energy could give us some rain on Sunday. Temperature wise, 33 right now at the airport. You can see the snow starting to move out. Uh, feels like 27, uh, but we could still see some lingering showers till about 10 a.m. this morning here in Billings, I think. Was at the northwest at about 7 miles an hour, and you take a look at temperatures out there, mainly in the 30s with that moisture rolling through. So just hang in there. We're going to have some cold temperatures the next couple of days. The weekend warms up. By the middle of next week, trying to head back to the 70s. All Not right. too bad. Right? Back to the 70s. Yeah. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Okay. And new story this morning. Scammers are always trying new tactics to steal personal information and hard-earned money. And this morning, Q2's Haley Monaco introduces us to a Billings man who almost fell victim when he took a call from what he thought was a Medicare representative. It was a normal start of the week for 69-year-old Kimmerd Kuhneman until his phone rang and he almost gave out personal information from his Medicare card. It was a 253, I believe, area code. Not knowing who was on the other end of the call, Kuhneman picked up. I had a hard time understanding them. The caller claimed to be with Medicare. They had a lot of my personal information, my date of birth, my address. Kuhneman believed the caller was who they claimed to be until they asked him for the date he received his Medicare card. This is when he got suspicious and told the caller they should already have that information. So I put them on the spot and they said, yeah, we got it on two of 20. And 
I looked at my card and it was not that, so I knew it was a scam. The whole situation left Kuhneman feeling agitated and wants to warn others about the call and how different it felt because of how much information they already knew about him. There's too many people getting taken advantage of. And when you get our age, you know, we, we don't have a very limited income and it's hard for us to make up whatever they take away from you. A good reminder to not give out personal information to someone soliciting it from you over the phone. Banks and government agencies will never call to ask for personal information. There's almost no reason for Medicare to call you. Just got to be really careful. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Haley, thank you. And South Around Up, 260 jobs could be on the line this morning as Signal Peak Energy threatens to shut down the state's only underground coal mine. The company claims it will end operations if it isn't allowed to expand into federal land. A U.S. District Court judge paused Signal Peak's expansion plan in February, ordering a study on the environmental impact of that proposal. The company says if the plan isn't approved, 2024 could be its last full year in operation. Meanwhile, miners are back to work at the East Boulder mine south of Big Timber. Operations shut down for several days over the weekend after sensors worn by employees detected elevated mercury levels. The mine didn't want to pause work, but we're told about a third of miners on that shift refused to continue until testing was done. The mine is still waiting on test results to determine the cause of those elevated levels, but all employees have been provided half mask respirators as a safety precaution. Now let's get to some national news. The first handful of jurors have been sworn in and seated for former President Trump's criminal so-called hush money trial in Manhattan. The case is not in session today, though the judge says opening statements could begin as soon as Monday. CBS's Jared Hill has the latest on this case. Former President Donald Trump took his fight against Manhattan's DA from the courtroom to a corner store, the site of a highly publicized fatal attack just two years ago that led to criticism of the very same man prosecuting his case. It's a rigged trial. Our courts, everything is screwed up in New York. The stop comes as the jury for Trump's hush money trial is taking shape. Four men and three women were seated Tuesday. Among them, a nurse, a teacher, and two lawyers. Kara McGee is one of dozens who were excused. It's someone who you've seen as this huge public figure for so long, and you walk in and see him, and he's just a guy. While one potential juror was being questioned, Judge Juan Marchand heard Trump audibly uttering something and chastised him, saying, I won't tolerate that. I will not have any jurors intimidated in this courtroom. This judge is so conflicted. Outside the courtroom, the former president repeatedly slammed the judge. He's rushing this trial and he's doing as much as he can for the Democrats. Trump also bristled at the requirement to attend every day of the trial while his 2024 opponent, President Joe Biden, campaigns. I should be right now in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in many other states. Five more jurors and half a dozen alternates still need to be selected. Trump has denied the allegations he falsified business records. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Next week, the judge will also hear arguments from both sides on prosecutors' request that Trump be held in contempt for public comments he made bashing key players in this case. Now on to some campaign finance numbers in Montana's U.S. Senate race. With more than six months to go before Montana's general election, Democrat Senator John Tester and Republican ta challenger Tim Sheehy have already raised significantly more money than Tester and Matt Rosendale brought in for the entire 2018 Senate campaign. Here's a look. The latest federal campaign finance report shows in the first three months of the year, Tester's campaign brought in over $8 million. They spent almost $7 million but still had more than 12 in the the bank at the start of April. Sheehy raised more than $3 million in the first quarter of the year. That includes a $500,000 loan of his own money. His campaign spent more than $2 million and had just one and had just $2 million uh, left in cash on hand. Some Montanans now have more time to apply for property tax relief. June 1st is the new deadline for applications for the Property Tax Assistance Program, uh, or PTAP as it's called. Uh, now this extension is only for Montanans who had a, quote, substantial hardship in meeting the April 15th deadline. That means anybody applying for the first time who meets the income requirements. Applications for a similar uh, a program similar to PTAP, specifically for disabled veterans and their spouses, will also be due June 1st. 
Now let's uh, take a look closer to home. 42% of high schoolers in Montana reported feeling sad or hopeless within the last year. More than 25% seriously considered suicide. With those numbers in mind, Hardin High School formed the Hope Squad. It's a peer support network, making students the first layer of detection for kids that are struggling. Staff is also receiving more training to be able to provide the best emotional support possible. Students tell us they appreciate the school's renewed focus on mental health. Whenever I am on Hope Squad next year, I just want to make feel, people feel like they're not alone. I may look normal on the outside and fine, but there's you never really know what's going on under the surface. And it's not a bad thing to have a mental health issue. The Hardin School Administration partnered with the Jed Foundation. That organization works to strengthen emotional health and reduce harmful behaviors for young adults. A Billings dad is on a mission to make sure every school lunch debt across the entire public school district is paid in full. He's already raised $20,000, meaning his goal is well within reach. Q2's Andrea Lutz reports. Billings dad Alex Clark set out with a goal in mind eight months ago. Uh, we are approximately at $20,000 raised. He had no idea. This was supposed to be just kind of a small project for friends. How much it would grow beyond that. It did not happen that way. Um, it turned out to be something much bigger than that. Clark knows all too well how important a sturdy meal is. He has two growing boys attending Billings School District 2. So at the start of the year, he made a call to action on social media, raise enough money to help pay for all school lunch debts in the district. We are about to do something that's historical, which is pay off school lunch debt for the entirety of the year, which has never been done before, but we need some help. A meal at the district can get spendy. Parents are paying as much as $60 a month for lunch for just one child who's not on free or reduced. Something Clark says only 5% of families even qualify for. Which means that 95% of the people who are, you know, comprised of this school lunch debt are folks who are middle America. You're right, folks who are making too much to qualify for free and reduced, but folks who don't make enough to really try to get by. He knows the community will step up and wipe out all the debt for families this year. Still, he's looking for a long-term solution, something he knows is possible. There has been seven states that have enacted free school lunch for students regardless of income, and there's been four states that have made it permanent. And so this is possible. We already have the roadmap. We already have the ability to see how to put this in place. Until then, he'll keep working to keep kids fed, and families financially secure. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thank you, Andrea. If you want to help Clark's cause, consider having a drink. Craft Local is hosting a fundraiser Friday night at 7. There will even be live music from Arterial Drives. You'll have to check that out. And